I'm going to talk about before I read any comments on how I've achieved balance this week and the things that I've done. And they're going to be small, all the way from small nuances to um, large overarching. This is the beginning of a umbrella of a bunch of different ideas. So, okay. The first thing I did is I created arcs to my balance. So it was sleep, nutrition, is that how you spell exercise? Exercise. I think it's like this. Did I spell this wrong? Do we have spell check on here? Oh, I did it. This is, like, this is the kryptonite for me. The word exercise, I never spell right. I don't care about it. <laughs> Computer balance. Okay, sleep. How did I tackle sleep? And I, and I created these umbrellas to just start focusing really on these core components of my life that are really important going forward to trade. Okay. Sleep, it was important to have eight hours, eight hours of sleep. The idea of getting eight hours of sleep is not always easy. I'm notorious for only getting five hours, six hours, sometimes four and three hours. I stay up till 2 a.m. in the morning doing editing sometimes and then I'm up by 7 a.m. to or I'm up by 5 a.m. to stream. I'll sleep until six. I'm running behind the eight ball, making breakfast, showering, having my smoothie while I shampoo my hair. And it's just a gong show like it's just never ending and and so so sleep always is a priority to me but you know with my schedule and the way it is I, you know i wake up it's like go mode it's like a fire hall bells are going off and it's like hey let's go we gotta go like i said shampooing my hair while i'm drinking a smoothie and shaving while i'm having my coffee hair and my coffee drinking that too and it's just it's just a, it's a bit of a gong show so <laughs> you know really really focusing back and prioritizing eight hours of sleep if anybody is, you guys are probably all very aware of sleep cycles and the way to um, manage that. If not, you can watch the podcast. The one that was linked to me this week was a great one by from the Huberman Lab. Uh, we talked about that. Don't need to go into it. But anyways, making sure I had my cycles, like my two four-hour cycles, right? So having two four-hour cycles. So making sure that I'm getting at least an uninterrupted block of my first four hour cycle was important. So just kind of keeping that in mind that, okay, I need to have four hours of uninterrupted sleep and, you know, go into my second cycle of sleep in the night. And then that second cycle, ideal if I get four hours, but if it gets cut off somehow, then fine. I only get two hours of my next cycle, but at least, you know, aiming for eight hours and two hours, six hours total being a worst case scenario. You have a four plus a two, right? Like six hours being my worst case scenario, which is, you know, used to be three, three hours or four hours. Um, sometimes even two hours of sleep I was doing these streams on uh, was was like, it, it, it's it's a lot to, to manage. Like that's, that's, that's really hard balance to have, right? So eight hours of sleep was really important. And um, that that's the first thing, being cognitive of that, that I need to get to bed early. And, um, you know, you, part, part of that is going to bed at the same time every night, making sure I stick to that. The podcast talks about you can never gain sleep. You can never catch up on sleep. I am a strong believer in that. Making sure that I get that eight hours of sleep. I've now rescheduled my wind down phase for the day. So wind down phase of the day. So making sure I have eight hours of sleep, right? Making sure I have a wind down phase to aid in my sleep. So, you know, I used to be pretty notorious for watching Twitch at night. Now I just listen to Twitch. I've done this for a long time, probably about seven years now maybe five, six, seven years. I used to watch Twitch before bed and fall asleep. Not a good thing. So now I'm listening to a podcast. I'm listening to Twitch. I'm doing something else for my wind down phase. And I'm, I'm very aware that part of that wind down phase is no coffee, right? No, no coffee past 2 p.m. I used to get really bad. Like, I think we've all been there. I used to get really bad coffee headaches during the days. I used to have, you know, you have three and four cups of coffee and then you start getting headaches when you wake up and no coffee past 2 p.m. really helped me curve this long, long time ago. But making sure I don't slip back in that old, old habit, no coffee past 2 p.m. I used to be doing it up to 5 p.m. This week, I've really made the conscious effort to make sure no, no coffee past 2 p.m. Just to make sure that, you know, I am getting a proper sleep that I need, the proper rest that I need. Okay. Making sure I have my buckwheat pillow. We recently moved maybe about uh, almost a year ago now. I, I've been just using a cotton pillow. I have a nice buckwheat pillow. I don't use it because it means... That I have to sleep on my back. So you don't want to sleep on your side with a buckwheat pillow. It means you have to sleep on your back. We've, we've been sleep training. We've had kids in the room. Just habits you have to break. So I've been using a cotton pillow for the past X amount of 
months, I don't know, seven, seven months or so now, eight months, uh, because we have an, an infant in our bed, uh, typically most nights, but now she's, uh, the, the, the child is sleep trained. There's no more sleep training going on in the bed. So instead of having that crutch of just keeping that comfort with a cotton pillow, I kind of want to have a sore neck for a few days, break back into my old habits, have my buckwheat pillow, sleep on my back, eight hours of sleep, looks healthy, feels healthy, no coffee, proper wind down phase. This is all starting to build like a really nice sleeping pattern for myself. I have a weighted blanket. Same, same thing. Infant in bed, couldn't use a weighted blanket before making sure I get back into old healthy habits. So weighted blanket, buckwheat pillow. So my actual physical things, you know, no coffee, wind down, cool, cool room, right? So cool temperature, cool temperature, and brackets temperature. So these are kind of the things I was tackling with sleep. So these are the things that I was, I was making sure that, you know, my, my sleep is, is it's the fuel for everything, right? It's the fuel for our minds. It's, uh, you know, you're talking about nutrition. Um, nutrition is pointless without sleep because of the, well, that's not true. Nutrition in terms of fat loss is pointless without sleep. Nutrition in terms of health is not like it's, it's important regardless, but in terms of exercise and losing weight and fat loss and things like that, people typically are exercising for these reasons. Without a good sleep schedule, none of this matters. It's, it's pointless. Um, your body is so inefficiently tuned. Your thermogenics aren't working properly. Your body can't metabolize. It can't oxygenate the fat cells. Like this just, there's many reasons why without sleep, you're trying to lose weight. It becomes a very difficult task, right? So for me, sleep was kind of the first thing I needed to make sure. Benefits of doing this may be like, oh yeah, you just better sleep, but cleaner mind, cleaner energy, better trades a much more efficient way to find levels on our charts. And this is why balance is so important because it, it tunes our mind like a sharpening stone, right? We are sitting there and sharpening our mind to make clear and better decisions and abilities. So once we start to achieve this balance of the mind, right? You're just going to naturally have better trades. Like this is kind of a no brainer. I don't even think I need to go past that, right? It's, it's, it's just very, very common sense stuff, right? But while it may be common sense, common practice is another thing. We have to take this time always to put into practice these things and not just say, oh yeah, clean mind, good energy, blah, blah, guru, blah, blah, talk, right? It's in a way, yes, but in a way, no, it should be common practice, which it falls short a lot for a lot of people, myself included. We fall into bad routines. We have a cup of coffee. We start getting into cycles. We don't want to sleep with the right pillows. You know, you drink coffee a little late. You have somebody coming on. Like These are things that we need to take time to reattune our body into. So it's sleep for me. That's how I tackled sleep this week. I'm really a big fan in life of optimization. I think everybody knows that. I, I love evolution. I love optimization. I love pushing forward constantly to be a better person in all angles, right? And, and this is part of trading as well. This is part of trading is, is always making sure that your mind is as sharp as it can be. So you don't get into some of these defectos, uh, depression and you know, all the things that would come with making bad trades, depression, self-guessing, self-worth, evaluations, compounding of losses due to terrible decisions, bankroll management faults. Like it, 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 it's, it's everything. It's, it's, it's everything. Okay. What did I do for nutrition this week? All right. First and most important thing was getting some matcha in my diet. I haven't taken matcha in a long time. It was time to get back into matcha. Matcha is really good for energy because I'm drinking less coffee. That balance payoff doesn't have to be sacrificed. I can now use a healthy substance, a little expensive, but that's okay. I think it's worth it. The balance payoff for not having as much caffeine as matcha is a really, really, really good source of energy. So when you're having less caffeine in your diet, which, uh, you know, less caffeine was a big one, right? Because I, I need to get off of caffeine as much, less caffeine. We should just hyper italicizes big caps. Matcha replaces the need for all that caffeine. It also helps you have a sharper mind, right? So it, it's multi-beneficial here as to where we're getting more sleep on one side of the pendulum, which is allowing our brain to function higher. Matcha on the other side is that nutritional value where it's like matcha, uh, essential fatty acids, your fish oils, um, things that boost your your mind's elasticity and, and, and power to think smart and straight and a mind power, right? An energy boost, a mind boost, whatever what you want to call that mind boost. So my matcha was important for me to get back uh, matcha into my diet because I'm sacrificing caffeine and I'm and I'm going into uh, a pattern where I'm trying to refocus my mind, retrain it, and retune it so that it's being in an optimal state. So, so matcha was like 
as clear as bones. Like this is one to one perfect solution for both not only tackling the less caffeine, which helps me sleep better and become less reliant and jittery all the way to having the mind energy. So, so matcha, I, I do ceremonial grade. Oh, sorry, not ceremonial grade. Ceremonial matcha, because I put ceremonial matcha in drinks. I, I don't bake with matcha. I just always from Japan. You don't have to. I mean, if you guys are, are, are struck in and saying, oh, like, I don't get it from Japan for these specific reasons, that, that's fine. There's California grown matcha. If you like, I, I am a believer that Japanese matcha is of the highest grade and for your own research, I suppose. But if, if you don't know too much about it, like, ceremonial grade from Japan, put it in drinks. OK, what else? Making sure my vitamin and nutritional balance is great. So I got biotin, biotin this week because I want, you know, hair, skin, health. I want to be feel healthy. I want to look healthy. So adding biotin back into my diet. I haven't done that in a long time. Oh, what else did I get? A full, full markup of vitamins. Let's just put that a vitamin, vitamin overhaul because I could list a bunch of stuff that is. So uh, everything from biotin to what else? What else did I get? And high quality vitamins always spend the extra money on high quality vitamins and uh, pay attention to dosages because you don't want to overdose on vitamins. Um, you know, taking something that's like melatonin is a good one. They talk about that. People will resonate with this very well because it's in the podcast. Melatonin, our body produces 0.1. It's all we need or 0.3, somewhere in that range. Biotin pills or sorry, melatonin pills to help you sleep. Is that what they're called? Melatonin? Yeah. Melatonin pills help you sleep. They, they can have up to 10 milligrams sometimes. It's a complete overuse. It breaks down the systems. It makes your body reliant and it, it makes your natural systems inefficient. So don't don't go on this vitamin kick where you're just juicing yourself with 5,000 milligrams every day of everything. What else did I get? Biotin, heme iron. Uh, heme iron is iron that I like. Heme is absorbed better in the body. So I'm a fan of heme iron. You, you can get different types of iron. I like heme iron. Uh, what else did I get this week? Uh, I could look at my list, actually. Um, new fish oils. Fish oil is the one thing you want to not skimp out money on. You, you get krill oil, you can get fish oil. It doesn't matter as long as you're getting, you know, 1,500 or 2,000 milligrams of um, EFAs in your body. I think it's milligrams with uh, fish oil, grams or milligrams, whatever they measured. And as long as you're getting 1,500 or 2,000 in your body, it's fine for me. That's what I like to take. Again, do your own research on your own dosages, what you do. That's what I do. Fish oil, krill oil, whichever, as long as it's an EFA that's of a high quality. So this is the one thing I wouldn't skimp out on price. Um, you know, like vitamins can be expensive. Fish oil is the one you should not. Like your matcha and your fish oil. Those are the two things you should never skimp, in my opinion. Protein is protein. Not really, but it, if you were to rank them in hierarchy of importance than unimportance, like matcha would be number one, fish oil would be number two. And then, and then down the line, you'd go, you know, protein and the others. What else did I get? I've already got all my other stuff, like L-glutamine all the other stuff so this is these are the things that i made a focus to add back into my diet uh glutamine is the other thing i added back into my diet so nutritionally and i have all my other vitamins but i, I did an overhaul i made sure i restocked on all the other things that i have like i take b's c's d's i take magnesium i take calcium i take a multi what else do i take that's not on this list Anyways, I take a bunch of stuff and that's fine i have like a handful of pills like 20 pills a day i take but it's 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 just vitamins right like Sometimes it's a multivitamin, but you're supposed to take four, right? So I did a complete vitamin overhaul for my nutrition. Um, also, Brazilian nuts, right? I added Brazilian nuts to my diet, uh, something I've never taken before. I'm trying this. It has this selenium or selenium in it or however you say it. Brazilian nuts you're supposed to take. It helps with weight loss, which is important to me right now because I do want to get back into better shape. We're focusing on nutrition. It's time to you know, get, get back into better shape and take that time to myself. After you have kids, you really have to... And, and that's what it is for me. Um, you have children and, and there's a bit of a sacrifice that you have to make there, right? Like when you have children, it's you don't always get the time to. You don't you, you don't always get that time to take care of yourself. Right? You don't always get that, that, that me time to take care of yourself. It's, and, and it was really important for me right now that my children are getting a little more dependent in life. They're not needing to be sleep trained and you know, they're, they're playing together and there's, there's just a, a little bit more freedom there for myself. It, it's really important to just take that time to rebuild your, your nutrition and your diet, right? So um, adding some of these things into my diet was really important. I also am now doing uh, smoothies every day for my breakfast. So, so daily smoothies are really important to me. You know, kale, all that good stuff. And you guys do your own, you know, whatever on that. But smoothies for breakfast is my new uh, breakfast thing that I'm doing. My matcha, my smoothie blah, blah. Great fuel for the day. Keeps me sharp. Keeps me straight. 
just an overall rebalancing of my diet and what I so I, I can say this is for sure um, rebalancing of food intake right really starting to say no to things like pizza again if, if I do have pizza I have one piece only and then substitute the rest of the meal with salad and chicken um, so if we're ordering pizza I make sure I get the skinless chicken wings and those are still kind of fatty but at least they're skinless and they're you, you know they're uh, they're baked so I get skinless chicken wings and uh, Caesar salad with with uh, light dressing and pizza and I'll have one piece of pizza or I'll have two halves of, of the two flavors like whatever just rebalancing in general of food intake to then meet my exercise goals right so I'm just going to put rebalancing of food intake you guys are all responsible for that yet I don't need to be nor am I equip, equipped or qualified to be a nutritional coach so rebalancing of food intake for me was an important thing this week I think I'm going to leave that one there exercise is going to be very quick because it's just you know getting back into exercising again which is just again something i've given up because of children and uh, it's just normal in life so doing uh, sit exercise which is sprint inter interval training okay we got to think about this one we got that right yeah sit exercise is the routine i'm doing now which is sprint interval training you do your own research on that um I'm going to put under exercise cold showers. I've, I've now implemented cold showers. I've never really tried this. So this is something new for me, experimenting with cold showers. So I've, I, I did this in the past very intermediately. Like I, I did this very infrequently. So I have done like a cold shower thing before, but I never really stuck to it to see the health benefits. Now I'm doing cold showers because cold showers boost your brain's ability to have um, a better thoughts, a cleaner mind. It's really good for your um, fat loss thermogenics in your body I am doing cold showers three to four times a week so I'm gonna say four four X a week four times a week right four X okay we'll do four X a week and the cold showers I'm doing three minutes in three minutes out uh, three minutes in one minute out sorry three minutes in one one I'm gonna say 90 seconds 90 seconds out four times that's kind of my cold shower routine so I am doing cold showers I'm just going to put that in nutrition although it does have to do with sleeping better it does have also to do the health benefits of joint health so I just put this in exercise joint health fat loss mind health cleaner thoughts I'm going to put it in with exercise either though it's not an exercise it's just something physical that I'm doing that's different 